Now many of us F1 fans know a lot about the drivers and their journey to the pinnacle of motorsport, but some people, especially newer fans of the sport, might not really recognise the people behind the pit wall. Some of those include the team principals. Think of them as football managers, but instead of managing a squad of 25 players, they have to guide up to a thousand people in multiple departments to win the fastest, most reliable car possible, whilst massaging the egos of two competitive drivers. Basically, they do a lot, and I think they need more awareness especially ones in the smaller teams as they get such little exposure throughout the season. That's why I made this series that will primarily focus on those people, including team principals, and I'll dive a bit deeper into their backstory. In this video, I thought we'd start from top of the grid at Mercedes with the big man himself, Toto Wolff. Torga Christian Wolff was born on the 12th of January 1972 in Vienna. He had a modest upbringing, and his first taste of motorsport was at 17 when he went to go and watch a friend race at the Nürburgring in Germany. Not really a bad track to see a first race, is it? From that moment on, he was hooked, and his passion for motorsport began. He took part in his first race at the Red Bull Ring in a Seat Ibiza track car, and also used it as a daily driver. And by the time he was 19, he started his single-seater career, and continued for a couple of years competing in the German and Austrian Formula 4 championships. Whilst outside of single-seaters, he came first in his class at the 1994 24 Hours of Nürburgring. To pay for his life as a driver and to gain even more experience, he started working as an instructor at the Red Bull Ring. After this win, he even got an offer to race in F1 at the Monaco Grand Prix. This was because one of his sponsors at the time was supporting Carl Wendlinger, who was driving for Sauber. In the first practice session of the weekend, he had a horrific crash losing the back end under braking for the Nouvelle Chicane, which resulted in him losing consciousness and being in a coma for several weeks. Thankfully, he recovered from his injuries, but Toto rejected the drive as he realised that he probably wouldn't have a long career in the sport due to his size, weight and lack of karting experience. He realised this after watching former F1 driver Alex Wirtz take much more speed into corners when they raced together in Formula Ford. That coincided with Venlager's sponsors opting to pull out of the sport, and that resulted in Toto losing the same sponsorship, leaving him with no money left to pursue a racing career even if he wanted to. It was at this time, aged 22, he decided to make a career change and focus on becoming an entrepreneur. He enrolled at the Vienna University of Economics and Business, but once realising that he would learn more on the job than in the classroom, he dropped out and took an internship at an investment bank. His talent for business shone, and he moved into sales management at an Austrian steel company called Coleman Handler. Whilst there, he set up his first company, mostly representing Coleman Handler as an agent in Poland. And in 1998, he decided to set up his own investment firm called March 15, alongside fellow Austrian René Berger. The investments were initially focused on small internet and tech companies, which was a great move as the internet was just starting to explode at the time. To put their successfulness into perspective, one company they invested in was an Austrian content delivery software provider called UCP, which became a company called QPass, and that was eventually sold to an American group called Amdocs in 2006 at a value of $275 million. So yeah, he was certainly making a lot of money. It was during this time that Toto had another go at racing, as he now had the funds at his disposal. He won one race on his way to 6th place in the 2002 FIA GT Championship in the NGT class. He continued racing throughout the mid-2000s in various championships, even finishing runner-up in the Austrian Rally Championship and winning the 24 Hours of Dubai in 2006. It was during this time he started a new venture, co-owning a racing driver management company alongside two-time F1 world champion Mika Hakkinen. And some of the drivers they brought through the ranks include DTM champion Bruno Spengler and F1 driver Valtteri Bottas. In 2004, he founded his second investment firm called March 16, it was a similar company to its predecessor, but this time they were focusing on investing in bigger companies, especially in Austria. This is where his F1 journey began. In 2006, March 16 purchased 49% of HWA. You may know them as the team that built the Mercedes DTM cars, and they also currently run teams in F2 and F3. Toto became HWA's director, and he was instrumental in the team's success. He even took it to the Frankfurt Stock Exchange in 2007, he wanted to invest in an F1 team at the time, but in the mid-2000s there were lots of manufacturers in the sport with huge factory backing, and it would have been incredibly difficult to compete as a smaller independent team. However, the financial crash led to Toyota and BMW leaving F1 in 2009, which coincidentally gave him an opportunity to invest a 16% stake in Williams and join the board of directors. And by 2012 he was a key leader in the team being an executive director, as Williams won their first race in 8 years at the Spanish Grand Prix with the legend Pastor Maldonado. It was in January 2013 that he officially joined the Mercedes F1 team as an executive director, 
after purchasing a 30% stake of Mercedes-Benz Grand Prix Limited with his business partner Rene Berger. Later that year, Toto took over from Norbert Haug as the head of Mercedes-Benz Motorsport, meaning he now has full responsibility for the entire Mercedes Motorsport program, from Formula 1 to Formula E, sports cars and the lower category junior formula. It was during this time that the team principal of Mercedes, Ross Braun, left as he disagreed with his own position in the team. So from that moment, Toto led the team alongside Paddy Lowe. We all know how successful Mercedes have been since the start of the hybrid era in 2014. Most people say it was just their engine that took them to all these wins, which to a large extent is true. But in my opinion, Toto Wolff has played a massive part in their success at an organisational level, the extent to which is comparable to Jean Todt leading Ferrari in the 1990s and 2000s. He's widely recognised for introducing a no-blame culture in the team, which basically means that if the team doesn't achieve its objectives or a mistake is made, nobody is allowed to blame an individual. Instead, the problem is identified and the team work together as a unit to ensure that it never happens again. Not only does this relieve pressure on an individual level, but it also gives everybody a common goal to work towards and the opportunity to consistently innovate. As we now know, it's also their chassis, not just their engine, that has led to them getting their success. Just look at their DAS system as a prime example of their innovation over the years. Toto also has a fantastic relationship with the drivers. He managed Valtteri Bottas and helped him get into F1 in 2013, whilst he also allows Lewis Hamilton to pursue his interests outside of F1, like his fashion line with Tommy Hilfiger. This allows Lewis to express his individuality, which was the main reason why he left McLaren in 2012. We now know that when Lewis is allowed to do whatever he wants outside of F1, he performs at his best, and Toto has to be given a lot of credit for managing him the correct way. I have to admit that before doing research for this video, I didn't really appreciate how important Toto is to Mercedes, and how much he's been a key part of their success over the last few years. I knew that their team culture was very forward thinking, but the fact that he in particular introduced it, I don't really think he gets enough credit for that. Now I'm not suggesting that Mercedes wouldn't have had their success without him, or that he's led the team all by himself. Paddy Lowe and especially Nicky Lauda have contributed massively over the years, and since Nicky's passing, Toto's admitted that he finds things very difficult, as he was incredibly close to Nicky and they shared many experiences together. Their relationship was more than just work colleagues, they were great friends. Toto has had to inspire the team since, and I believe he wants to carry on Nicky's legacy as much as he can. I'm sure he also asks himself sometimes what Nicky would do in certain situations. The results speak for themselves though. Each year they seem to be getting better, and I don't think you could argue against this current Mercedes team being the best has ever been, and Toto Wolff has been an integral cog in that well-oiled machine. Well I hope you guys have learned something about Toto's backstory, and how he got into his position at Mercedes. I find it really interesting when sports teams are managed successfully by people who have not really participated at the top level, and Toto is one of those, although he does have some racing experience. Now as I said at the beginning of the video, I want to make this a series on people in the sport other than the drivers. So if there's anybody else you guys could recommend, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Put your suggestions in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see any of my future videos, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. And with everything that's going around at the moment, make sure you guys stay safe.